I'm Sheila Murphy. In our transformative R01 application, Lourdes Bice Conde Garbinati and I asked two questions. The first was, what caused Pinocchio's nose to grow? And the second was, what was the name of your second grade teacher? If the answer to the first question came to you faster and more easily than the answer to the second, you're not alone. The power and perseverance of stories or narrative have been recognized and utilized for thousands of years. Yet when it comes time to craft health messages designed to convey potentially life-saving information, Western medicine all but ignores the use of narrative. From the standpoint of government agencies like NCI, they're just being prudent. After all, there's never been a tightly controlled experiment or clinical trial that presented the identical information in both a narrative or story-based format and the more traditional non-narrative format and compared their impact on the target audience. RTR01 did exactly that, as well as identifying the conditions under which narrative may be more or less effective. We developed two short films that contain the same facts regarding cervical cancer prevention, detection, and treatment. But the narrative film, Tamale Lesson, embeds these facts into a story about the Romero family's preparations for their youngest daughter's birthday. Okay, when you go to the doctor, you sit on the table and they spread your legs like this. Oh, you stop. And what exactly does the doctor do? Okay, so let's pretend this is your vagina. It's not that color. Petra, just pretend. Okay, I'm a tamal. So the doctor has like this device, this metal device. They just spread the walls of your vagina. I don't say words like that. Petra, you've never had this test done before? It's not as bad as it looks. Mira, mira. They take this mascara type wand and then they just wipe you on the inside like that. The non-narrative film, It's Time, takes a more traditional approach by featuring doctors, patients, and graphics. Using a random digit dial procedure, we selected and surveyed 300 European-American, 300 Mexican-American, and 300 African-American women to establish their pretest or baseline level of cervical cancer-related knowledge, attitudes, and behavior. We then randomly assigned them to receive either the narrative or non-narrative film, and then resurveyed them two weeks and then six months later. Looking at the gray segments of each bar, you can see that at pretest, before our participants had seen either film, a significantly higher percentage of European American women had been screened within the past six months compared to our African American participants and Mexican American participants. This suggests that an ethnic disparity in cervical cancer screening existed in our sample at pretest, not unlike the ethnic differences that exist in the general population. The blue segment of each bar represents the increase in screening within the six-month window after seeing one of our two films. While both films increased screening, the narrative was more effective than the non-narrative in doing so. In fact, the ethnic disparity that we saw at pretest is virtually erased at six months for the Mexican-American and African-American women. We're not suggesting that it is ethnicity per se that underlies these effects, but rather the extent to which an individual identifies with the characters or becomes immersed in a story that matters. Although this research focuses on cervical cancer, these results have implications for virtually all healthcare communication.